today we're going to do a field test for FW Pearlescent Liquid Acrylic Ink in Platinum Pink. And I'm going to ink this super adorable little unicorn child using a G-nib in a Tachikawa holder. And then in a follow-up video, I'm actually going to show you guys how to watercolor that. So I've already shaken up my FW acrylic. The next thing I need to do is get a hold of a dinky dip. And if I can't find a dinky dip, which I may not be able to find, that's okay. I actually have a small little sample pot that has been cleaned out. And I'm going to use that to hold my acrylic ink. And the reason we want to do this is it's less likely to spill all over the place because it's got a lower center of gravity and it's also just less ink to get all over the place. You can even use a little bit of putty or some sticky tape to hold your ink in place on the desk if you prefer. Then we're going to recap our bottle and grab a scrap piece of paper which I usually have handy. This will work. And this was, I may have to put more in here, this may not be deep enough. This was inked on um, oh, some watercolor paperboard. I will remember the name in a few minutes. But it is a cold press watercolor paperboard. So it does have some texture to it. You can also do this on a hot press, which will have less texture to the paper. And if you enjoy my art and my illustration, I am thinking about introducing a new Patreon reward where once a month, I'm going to select one of my patrons just from the general population. So even $2 backers are, um, are applicable for this to receive an original illustration from me. So. If you enjoy my art, that might be something you're interested in. Now I have done inking tutorials using a dip nib in the past. In fact, I've done quite a few of them on this channel. You can find those in my Inktober Art Snacks playlist. That's the ones from last year. Loads of demonstrations, loads of comparisons. So if you want to start inking traditionally, that would be where I recommend you get started is in that playlist. I've also done quite a few tutorials and walkthroughs on inking over at natosoup.blogspot.com. Now, as I'm inking, this is actually laying down a very thick line that's gonna take a while to dry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ink her hair and then step away, because I'm putting down a very thick line here with this Tachikawa G-nib. Um, I'm gonna step away and let that dry, and then I'm going to come back and continue working. So I'm gonna work on this piece in stages. And G-nibs are my favorite nibs to ink with, but there are a wide variety of nibs on the market that offer or have different properties. One of my favorite places to try out new nibs is actually Paper and Ink Arts. And you guys, they have both a physical location here in Nashville and a web location. And I'm going to provide a link in the description below. And last time I was there in person, they had a nib bar, which means 
So usually when you buy nibs, you have to buy them in packs, either say 10 of the same or like, you know, 10 different nibs, which, um, you know, you might end up with duplicates or nibs you don't really want. But over at Paper and Ink Art, you can buy them open stock from the nib bar, which I thought was really cool because I, I have not been to too many art supply stores here in the U.S. where you can do that. You can do that both in person and online. And their prices for their op open stock nibs are actually quite reasonable as well. That actually would add some overhead to them because they have to sort them and, um, you know, distribute them, keep them stored and labeled. I mean, it does create work for them to do that. And they do have to reorganize them at the end of the sales day since people will put things sometimes in the wrong home. So the fact that they only charge a little bit of markup is actually very impressive considering the fact that a nib bar is a novelty. And they are not a sponsor, I'm just on good terms with them, so I think they do a good job. I really like their customer service, so I'm happy to give them a plug, especially if it means they keep having that nib bar. All right, so I'm going to give that a chance to dry and then I'm going to come back and do the face. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. Now I'm going back in. And let's make sure. Yeah, perfect. It has had a chance to dry. I'm going to use this as a protection. And I've sort of inked myself into a corner because I have wet and wet and not necessarily anywhere good to rest my hand. So be careful. All right, it's starting to tear up where I'm trying to apply ink over there. So. What I'm gonna have to do, I think, is I'm actually going to move on down here into the neckline and ink that, and then I'll let this dry and come back to it. Let that dry as well. I'll be back in a bit. All right, guys, it's been a little while. Things have had a chance to dry. So now I'm hoping to go back in, get this finished up. And it's totally okay. And normal to need to do your inking in stages like that. Not everybody does, but if you do, don't beat yourself up over it. Now we're gonna do the other side. Right, that's getting chewed up. So rather than force that, I'm gonna work around it, come back to it in a little bit. Inking on watercolor paper like this, sometimes it can get kind of chewed up. So rather than try to be more stubborn than my supplies, I'm the human, so I can be the accommodating one. And of course, I enjoy big, thick, bouncy, cartoony, American-esque lines. So I do put down a lot more ink on my paper. It's another area I'm gonna have to go back and fix. And I also try to, I also tend, I'm sorry, to put more pressure down on my paper than you probably will. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back, clean it up, finish it up. 
All right, guys, so we are almost finished inking this. There are some areas that I want to go back over because I was sort of ginger with them when I noticed that the paper was starting to tear up. Gonna try to be delicate with that as well. We're using an acrylic based ink. All right. So at this point, everything's looking good. I'm going to let this dry overnight and then I'm gonna erase it. And then I will see if there are any areas that really could bear retouching. But it sure was fun to ink with. It sure is sparkly and pretty. So I will see you guys tomorrow with the finished piece. Hey guys, it's time to erase the line art from my FW for Lesson Acrylic Ink. It's been 24 hours. So I have a Creative Mark White Stroke here. It's a very soft vinyl eraser. And I'm just going to gently, without applying too much force, try to erase the graphite from underneath the, the inks. So I'm gonna erase the sketch. And as you guys can see, some of the graphite has been sort of trapped underneath. I'm not really concerned about that. I kind of knew that was gonna happen. Um, the solution to that would be to draw with a lighter hand, to sketch with a lighter hand, or to use, say, a colored lead in the same color as your ink. So maybe a pink color Eno would be less noticeable. And surprisingly, not too much color or too much sparkle is coming up on my eraser. That can sometimes be a problem when you're erasing the line art out from underneath. And this was uh, Cottonwood watercolor paper. I think it's been attached like watercolor board. Cottonwood Arts, I believe. I picked this up at David's Art Supply in New Orleans, Louisiana, probably in late 2015. Sometimes with all the things that I try to do for this channel and the blog and conventions, uh, things it takes a while for me to get to things, but I'm working on it. And if you want to see what I think of this paper, you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com where I will have reviewed it as part of the Watercolor Basics series. And I have a hub page there that I do try to keep updated, but I can't always keep on top of it since I do release so much content and I am doing it by myself but you can search in the search bar for Cottonwood Arts and you'll find this review. That is if it's up. Hopefully it'll be up by the time y'all see this video. Sometimes videos get edited quicker or years after I'm ready to um, do the post. Anyway, very, very cute color. It's almost like um, a baby pink. So a pastel pink, it's not too wild. Um, most of my graphite erased quite cleanly. This eraser doesn't pick up too much of the ink, which is great. I'm glad there was no ghosting. Perhaps that is because I allowed it to dry for 24 hours. And I'm just kind of nitpicking here and there, picking up additional, sorry, picking up any additional graphite that I might see. Instead of using my hand, I'm gonna just brush it off with this brush. So I will see you guys again with this piece soon when I do the watercolor illustration. But for now, that was my review of Platinum Pink FW Pearlescent Liquid Acrylic. So before I sign out, I'm gonna give a few caveats. This is a beautiful, beautiful ink, but it is acrylic based. That means it is permanent, permanent, permanent when it's dry, especially on paper. You're more likely to tear up your paper than you are to remove this ink. Even if you use a sand eraser, um, it's, you're still going to be tearing up the paper. This sort of ink is waterproof, very waterproof when dry. However, alcohol-based markers such as Copic, Blick Studio Brush markers, or say Prismacolors will actually reactivate the acrylic and um, it's going to cause smearing and a mess. Now, you might want that if you're using something pretty impearlescent like this. You could use it to your advantage perhaps, but I really wouldn't recommend it. So anything that is a solvent base, you're not going to want to use with this acrylic. This can be used with a dip, plant, dip pin, but please don't use it in a fountain pen. You're going to clog your fountain pen 
especially because this has small particles of mica, which make it vaguely pearly, but not iridescent, that will definitely ruin your fountain pen. So please do not use this in your fountain pen. You can also use this with brushes, although you should clean your brush out immediately. You don't want the acrylic to dry in your brush. It'll ruin your brush, especially nice sable hair brushes like one might use for inking. And you can use this in a reed pen, but as always, you should clean your uh, art supplies thoroughly after use. If you have buildup like this, as you see here on my Tachikawa G nib, you can use an alcohol wipe to remove the um, buildup. So I have a couple more pieces like this to ink with some of the other colors I own from their selection. So I will see you guys in those videos, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the inking demonstration. And I hope you enjoyed the small review. If you are interested in purchasing that product, you can find a link to it below in my description. Using the links that I provide helps me out a lot. They are affiliate links and I see a small percentage of each sale. So if you wanna help me out and you don't have a lot of money to spend, but you're looking to acquire more art supplies, that is a great way to do it. 